Welcome. You're about to watch the first ever Chaffee Brothers podcast. Now what we would ask is that you guys watch all the way until the end because then you can be entered for an opportunity to win a prize that's related to the content that we're going to be covering in today's show. Please enjoy the show and feel free to comment. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the first ever Chaffee Brothers Podcast. I'm Ken. And I'm Alex. And we're here basically to review games, movies, TV shows, pretty much anything nerd culture related, with the assumption that you actually care what it is that we have to say. Uh, our normal format will probably consist of us uh, each taking turns reviewing different, uh, reviewing a, a game or a movie or a TV show, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes we'll be reviewing the same thing, other times uh, we'll be reviewing different items based on kind of our individual tastes, because they differ slightly. Uh, today we're both going to be reviewing Fallout 4. Now, um, I think we'll start with uh, some of my pros. <clears throat> and uh, just so you know, this is uh, on the Xbox One, pre-mods, no DLC, I believe the version was 1.4. So I think since uh, since our recording, uh, there's been quite a few, quite There's a number been, of updates yeah, to mod support the, and, and the uh, new DLC, yeah, and new all DLC the and stuff like that. that but out. we're just going with like the bare bones base model, just to kind of really just just review it from from the ground up from that perspective. Um, so let's get started. Uh, one of my pros was beautiful set pieces. Uh, I just thought that there was some really interesting things visually. Uh, I thought the environments were, were really cool and, uh, you know, kind of colorful in spots. Um, you know, the, the, the baseball stadium was a really, really cool concept of, you know, kind of, you know, building a little community in there so that it was all nice and safe and, you know, tucked away. Uh, and it, it made a lot of sense to me, so. Definitely. Uh, definitely, <clears throat> especially going back to, like, Fallout 3, where it was just pretty much green. Yeah. Fallout New Vegas, brown. Yes. This had a little more color to it, not as much, but yeah. a little more. And I know that some, nice. some people um, complained about that, but I really I really enjoyed it. I thought I thought the color added a nice nice touch. It was like kind of that like it still had that gritty, you know, uh, post apocalyptic feel. Oh, dirty but just feel. yeah, it looked dirty, but just just a touch of color just to kind of brighten things up. Um, another one of the pros was the retro armors, you know, uh, was really cool in Fallout 3, you had, uh, you had just basically the one power armor type, but what was cool in this game is that they gave you the opportunity to, uh, you know, try some of the other armors that were actually in previous games, um, and wear those, so that was kind of a really, it was a nice, it was a nice touch. Nice little nod to the original. Yeah. Um, another one was settlements. I really enjoyed settlements. Uh, I know it's not something that everybody has enjoyed about the game, and um, it, it just, I really enjoyed the whole aspect of it, because it, it, it always made, it, it just made sense to me that if you were going to, you know, be in this post-apocalyptic world, you know, some of us would definitely, you know, take the uh, the route of not necessarily joining up with a, a settlement that's already existing, but, you know, going off on our own and finding our own settlement. And it didn't quite go as far as that, as finding your own place, uh, but it was nice that you could kind of choose your own home base and build your own house and, you know, really kind of create, uh, you know, a dwelling in this po post-apocalyptic world that was reflective of that world. It was kind of fun. Yeah, you liked the settlements more than I did. I, yeah. I, was, I wasn't a huge fan of the settlements. I thought it was cool. And actually getting back into the game, I've, I've had a little more fun with them. Um, but, yeah, they, they weren't they didn't do yeah. it for me. Um, another pro was useful junk. Uh, God, I know yes. in, in Fallout 3, one of the things that was really, uh, you know, frustrating at first is that you'd be, you know, running around gathering up all this stuff... And there was only really very few of it that could actually be used to build things. And they could really only be used to make some of the, um, the, 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 the homemade uh, weapons, weapons there. <clears throat> so it was, you know, so then once you got to a certain point, you kind of knew what was worth keeping and what wasn't. And then there was just kind of all this garbage in the game that was really useless. Um, and what's really nice about this is that every single piece that you pick up 
can be used. It can be broken down into pieces for weapons or your settlement or or for mods for your armor. So it was just it's just nice. And I mean, of course, it does add to that 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 issue of you know um, you know having your pack being too full and slowing you down. Yeah. yeah. But that's part of the fun. That's fun. That's part of the fun. It was. Well, it is part of the fun. And going back to like what you were saying when I first played Fallout Three, being that it was I was young in those days and it was my first Bethesda RPG and it was my first Xbox 360 game and I didn't know what to do and I just collected a bunch of junk and then eventually I became over encumbered and I'm like what's going on I can't run <laughs> and I'm like but but I have all this junk I I, I could pick it up it's got to mean something if I can exactly, pick it up like, exactly. go, like it's got to mean something I got to do something with it right. you know going back to like PS2 PS1 era games where you only interacted with stuff when yes, it meant you only something. interacted with something that that was that meant something. So, um, <clears throat> so I, I when I when I was to what you were saying when I was playing Fallout Three, I just gathered junk and I hated it. And then with this, you're gathering junk, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's great. You know, you, you don't mind kind of doing all encumbered searching for that. Yeah. pack of duct tape, the freaking yeah. duct tape every time. <laughs> Never get enough pieces. Piece Never have enough. Never have enough. Um, uh, so the next next uh, pro that I would have is interesting companions. Uh, you know that's one of the things I really enjoyed is that uh, you know there was such a, a plethora of different companions and each one really seemed to kind of have their own personality and backstory. Whereas uh, with Fallout Three, it was just kind of like they were kind of interchangeable. It was like oh you could either have you know um, who's the super mutant there. Uh, Fox. 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 You could have Fox, or you could have, you know, uh, any of the other people, and they were just interchangeable. Um, so, you know, it was really nice that uh, that you had different people with different personalities, and, you know, you could, uh, you know, it, and some one of the sub-bullets of this particular point is uh, if you raised your affinity enough with these particular people by doing things that they liked, um, you know, and, and not things that they disliked, you could get a companion perk. So once you reached a certain level of affinity, you got a perk that was associated with that character, um, and each different character had a different perk associated with them. So that was just a really cool... Perks were permanent, too. Like permanent you perks, You could get right, rid of the right. companion and, and still, have that perk. still have that perk. Yeah. Now, I mean, you... My brother here always played with... You always played with companions. You always had companions. I, I enjoy having companions with me. Any of them. I actually didn't get into playing with companions until my, like... The second or third time going through the game. Yeah. Um, so playing with companions, I gotta say, having Piper was fun. She was fun. Yeah. Um, she was my favorite. I think. And uh, with some of the new DLC, you'll find that it's it, there. There's a lot of cool companions yeah. in there. So yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. The companions were fun. Companions were very cool. Uh, dog meat, obviously. Dog meat was a huge addition yes. to the game, and it was just just. I mean, that's really, that's all there is to it. He's cool. You get to have him in the game. Uh, he does not die. So that's, that's great. A, that's <laughs> great. I didn't know he didn't die. Coming from Fallout 3 where he does die. Yeah. And then they added on a perk later where he comes, where he comes come back. Puppy, yeah. Um, I didn't know he could die. And I always, I fell in love with dog meat. Oh, if sure. It, when I say I travel, I didn't travel with companions. I don't mean I didn't travel with dog meat. I always traveled with dog meat. Yeah. He was my favorite. I loved him. I love dogs, so it was fun. He would go. I would. I would get. I would really get mad when people shot at him. <laughs> I would get pissed. Leave my dog alone. Uh, yeah, I'd hear it whimper and I'd be like, "Who shot a dog? <laughs> Who's getting a crowbar to the face right now? <laughs> Who? Like, you really want to mess with my dog? Yeah, I had a double yeah. barrel shotgun. I'm gonna yeah. kill you. So I gotta say, it, he was just. He's honestly, you could travel without him the entire game, and it wouldn't make a speck of difference. Mm -hmm. But when you travel with him. <laughs> It's just fun. I yeah, loved absolutely. him. Absolutely. Absolutely loved him. Yeah. Um, so my next pro would be weapon customization. This was a really cool idea uh, that they worked into this game, and it really makes a lot of sense, and was kind of kind of is similar to what we were talking about with Fallout Three, where you you know could kind of build the weapons, like the junket launcher. I think was one of the things you could build. Yeah, um, the, the junket launcher, the shish kebab, the railroad rifle, railroad rifle uh, in the previous those. game. So that's kind of taking that to the next level in the weapon customization. So you can customize the barrel, you can customize the the, the hilt, you can customize the sights on it. Stock is what they. Well, Stock, that sorry, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Stock. <laughs> Playing Fallout, not Elder Scrolls. Yes, yeah. That's right. Um, 
So it was just very cool that you were, you would, and each of these things has a different impact. And it was, was what I thought was really cool about it wasn't that it wasn't just like a steady progression of, you know, good, better, best. There were actually some situations where it was like, well, this will give you better distance, but, you know, maybe the the the, the impact won't be as much. Yeah. Or yeah. you can have, you know, more power with this, but it's going to be a short range weapon now, you know. So it was really cool that you, you can really create a weapon kind of tailored to the way that you play the game. Yeah, you definitely can can customize. It's one of the big overarching themes to any Bethesda game, and this game gets it right. You can customize the way right. you play. You can right. tailor this game to the way you want to play it. And I love the weapon customization. I thought it was great. Sometimes I'd be making a weapon that was insanely powerful. My mm -hmm. 50 caliber sniper really you know, took out some heads when I was playing through my first time. And then some of my weapons, I just wanted to look cool. Sure. I just wanted Absolutely. a weapon that looked cool, and I, you know, I could just, you know, be using it and be like, this is cool. This is a fun gun. This is just a fun gun to use. Glowing night vision so sights. Glowing night vision <laughs> sights. And, like, you know, it, it just, it was, it was fun to be able to get that option to customize. Absolutely, it was, yes. that, It's Very something cool. they didn't need to do, but they just kind of went that extra mile. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and then my last pro would be the character throwbacks. It was really cool to see some characters in the game that were from previous games. You know, we saw that with Fallout 3. They had, um, what was the tree guy? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I can't even remember Yeah, it's going to kill me now. It'll, uh, yeah, it'll come back. Say like, 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 like Herbert or something like Herbert. that. Herbert. It was Herbert. <laughs> um, so that was something that was really cool about Fallout 3, and they kind of brought that back here. Um, you know... Spoiler alert, they had, you know, uh, McCready, who was a fallback to, to Fallout 3. He was one of the kids in, in Little Town. Uh, he was Little the mayor lamp there. Light, which Little Lamplight. Which is interesting. Um, and then Dr. Lee, who who worked with uh, the father character in Fallout 3. So she she kind of comes back, too, depending on, on what path you end up taking. You yeah, can, you definitely cool. See those people. Little nods to, yeah. the, to the past. Mm -hmm. And a little nods to make it seem like this is a connected universe. Connected universe, absolutely. Which yeah. is nice. And, and what I didn't realize at first is that this game actually takes place 10 years after Fallout 3. Yeah, so, I knew you that. know, by interacting with these characters, you can kind of see the impact of that. Yeah. Even though it's not a directly to, it's not a direct, I don't want to say it's, it's not a direct sequel. It's to not Fallout a direct 3, sequel, but it's definitely a, but it's a within, shared universe. It's obviously within the universe, it's obviously <laughs> set in the same world, and right. to see at least a little bit of, you know, what my character did in Fallout 3, I spent you know, hundreds upon sure. hundreds of hours in Fallout sure. 3. So to see a little bit of the impact, it's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so, with all things, where there's pros, there are a few cons. Um, just a few, though, because, uh, you know, I definitely very much enjoyed this game. Uh, one of the cons that I had was, uh, you know, we were talking about the customization of weapons and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things they did away with in this game that they had from Fallout 3 was the degrading weaponry. You know, in Fallout 3, um, you know, it was really important to me to grab every weapon because you never knew when you were going to need it to fix something that you had currently. And you always kept, like, a couple extra weapons on hand yeah. so that you could fix your weapon if it degraded too much, um, especially earlier on when you could only um, fix it up to a certain point. Yeah. Uh, and yep. they, they, they did away with that here, which um, was kind of unfortunate. And I, under, I can understand from uh, a programming perspective how with the mods and everything that might have become complicated. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was I was sad to, to, to see it go because there came a point where I, I didn't want to bother picking up certain weapons anymore because I had a version of it that I used and it was never going to degrade. So why pick it up and just carry it around? Yeah, and, and to that point with Fallout 3 and New Vegas with the um, special weapons that you would get, the special variants of the weapons... Mm -hmm. And you always wanted to keep those. It, it it added an extra. It added an extra set of. I don't want to say difficulty, but it just added a, something extra to be able to be like, well, I really like this weapon. I want to keep it repaired. Yeah. I want to keep it up to snuff. I need to grab some of these old poopy weapons and bring them in and fix my other weapon with this weapon. So it 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 added a little more in. It added a little more depth to the game. Sure. I felt like with the degradating weapons that that you just don't have with with this yeah. game, which is which is really a shame. Yeah. 
Um, so next con that I would have is uh, stiff animations, and I think this is kind of common to some of the Bethesda games. Uh, it's certainly that was com something that was common to you know the earlier Fallout, Fallout Three, and Fallout New Vegas. <clears throat> is the you know the character animations because uh, of the way that they've you know the the gameplay is of the game. Uh, the characters come across a little stiff every now and then. You know the the mouth. You know, lip syncing isn't quite spot on in some cases. Um, characters are kind of stiff here and there. They, they do awkward gestures and stuff like that. Um, but it's kind of a nitpicky thing. But it, but it was something that was was noticeable from time to time. Yeah, I mean, you're running on... Uh, the biggest thing is this is running on a modified version of the Skyrim engine, which mm -hmm. is the creation engine, um, as opposed to Fallout 3, which was running on the Game Boy O engine. Mm -hmm. This... Even though this is a highly, highly modified version of the engine, you still see that it, it, it's still aged a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're, you're still seeing some of the bugs come sure. out of it. And it's um, and, and definitely the stiff animation is there. Yeah, as with any Bethesda game. Yep. Yep. Uh, next con would be the companion limit, and this was a thing that that I thought was kind of uh, an odd choice that they made, uh, because in the previous Fallout game. Uh, I was able to travel with a companion and a dog, and the three of us could go jaunting through the wasteland with no no problem. Uh, in this game, they only let you have one companion, whether it is a dog or a person. You are only allowed one. Uh, so that was really frustrating to me, because there were times when I really wanted to travel with dog meat, uh, but then again, I also wanted to travel with one of the other companions so that I could raise you know, my affinity and get the respective perk. Um, or I just enjoyed traveling with those companions. Um, so I thought it was a little bit of a shame that you couldn't travel with your companion and dog meat. Uh, I understand if they didn't want you to have necessarily a whole gaggle of people coming along with you, uh, but I thought that was an odd choice. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, I mean, once again, when I first played through the game, I didn't really care because I loved dog meat. I kept him with me the whole time, so it didn't really matter much to me. But once again, going through some of my second, third playthroughs through now, it, it I, I get what you're saying. I, I don't know why I can't have dog meat and Piper with me at the same time. Yeah. What's the big deal? Yeah, it didn't, didn't make sense to me either. Um, another con that I had, and this is kind of a big one for me personally, is that, uh, you know, the game didn't have the trademark ending slideshow. It had kind of a, a, a nifty little ending animation that kind of loosely gave an indication of what had happened in the world based on, on, on what you had done. But what had happened in the past is it, it was very clear um, where you had made choices and what the impact of those choices were to the characters in the game. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, when you know when you uh, saved the people, or you know, uh, saved the people and brought them to the Lincoln Memorial, the slaves in Fallout Three, and brought them to the Lincoln Memorial. That was reflected in the slideshow at the end of the game. Yes. Um, yep. <clears throat> this game, it didn't do that, and I was very frustrated with that because I had made certain decisions throughout the course of the game. And I thought to myself, ooh, I wonder how this is going to turn out. Because it was always interesting to me in the fall previous Fallout games that some decisions you made that you thought were the right decisions were actually, you know, ended up having a negative consequence long term. You know, yeah. you, you, you saved a settlement or you saved an area or something. And it turned out that by doing that, you actually weakened the defenses of the area by making peace among these people. And they got overrun by mutants or raiders or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, conversely as well, you do something that you thought was going to, you know, have a negative impact long term. But ended up being, you know, a, a positive, a positive thing. So I was really disappointed to to not have that end slideshow. That was, uh, you know, I was expecting yeah, it. I beat the game. I was waiting for it, and for it to not be there, I, it was just kind of a letdown. Yeah, yeah. And, and to that point, um, even even without the slideshow, there just weren't that many. I feel like decisions that that were going to even affect the gameplay all that much. Like, there was no morality system in the game. There, it, there wasn't a morality system, and I do know where you're coming from with that. I think that but, sort of took away from some of yeah, the... Yeah, I, I think there were decisions you made, and... and oh, yeah, there were definitely decisions you, you know, made, like, especially towards the end, not no, to yeah. spoil anything, you know, signing with different factions. Different factions, but I think in general, what I, what I meant is, like, the little side quests and things that you do, um, and, and seeing the impact of those. Like, for example, there was, um, in one of the settlements, you have to uh, go save 
the one of uh, one of the settlers' sons from the raiders, or or, or he had yeah. joined them. You had to convince him to come back or whatever. And you convinced I convinced him to come back, and he was with his father, and I had them make peace. I mean, that could have gone any number of different ways. I could yep. have just killed the kid. I could have convinced him. Or, you know, I could have, you know, which I think the the father wanted you to do initially. I could have had him come back and not have them reconcile. You know, so there are a lot of different choices that you could have made um, that that could have potentially had a long term impact to yep. that individual yep. group. Um, additionally, you had the, you know the silver shroud quest. You know, without you know spoiler alert. Um, you know, when you're dealing with Kent, you could have, you know, potentially saved him, you could have shot him, you could have, you know, shot Shinjin, or, or, or you know, there's there's a whole bunch of different things that could have happened there um, that could have had a long-term impact in the area that could have had a slideshow, uh, uh, you know, for it. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. So, my last con um, is bugs. I mean, but like all Bethesda games... There are bugs, and we accept those bugs because everything else is usually so awesome, but that doesn't mean that they don't suck. Um, so, you know, for example, the one that I, that's really glaring that, that, that I had an issue with was the, the Kate bug. And what had happened is I had raised my affinity with Kate to the point where I had initiated her quest um, to kind of bring her to that next level, and we had the conversation but the quest never populated in my quest menu. So now I'm in a position where I can't get it to move forward and there's been no fix implemented. And since I'm playing it on the Xbox, I can't even do a console command to fix it. So I'm basically stuck until they decide to implement a fix or I re restart my game. Um, so that's very frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I didn't run into any really game-breaking glitches that I've run into, like, with Fallout 3 in New Vegas. I've run into a few game-breakers. Actually, I did run into s some, but that was after I did mods and stuff right. like that, so I can't right. really blame Bethesda for that. That's my own doing. I put about 100 mods on my game, and that's <laughs> how I work. So I, I can't say that I rarely ran into a lot of glitches, but I get I do get it. I've, ran, I've done it with Fallout 3. I've done it with yeah. Fallout New Vegas. Oblivion, Skyrim, all of Bethesda's games, I've had that happen, so yeah. I, I get it. And to be honest, I didn't really run into that with Fallout 3. I know that there were some early on, but I think I, I came to the Fallout 3 game a little late, and um, I had like the, the, the Collector's Edition or something like that. And um, so I think by the time I got to Fallout 3, they had already rectified a lot of those things. Yeah, you came to it a, a, probably about two years out from its right. actual release yeah, that whereas makes no when sense. i played yeah. it it was on it was almost on release i got it for it came out in november i think or october i got it for christmas that right. year right um so there were still a, quite a few game breaking glitches in mine and i ran into a few of them sure sure all right so now i'm going to turn it over to alex and have him go through his pros and cons and i will likewise interject as he's talking uh i mean my pros are very similar to my brother's pros here. A lot of the same sort of stuff applies, but I did have some things that I specifically enjoyed more than, you know, my brother did. Uh, one of the things was, so first I should tell you, I'm playing it on PC. Uh, when I first played through it, no mods, no DLC. It was running version 1.4. And I was running it on a GeForce GTX 970 with full graphics, uh, four gigs of VRAM. So it was it was on its what highest. About, what about your your regular RAM? Uh, you 14 gigs yeah, 14 of regular gigs. RAM, um, and just an i7 processor, nothing fancy there. But I mean, I was playing it, you know, full bore. Right. Really, it's the reason that I got the new graphics yeah, max, card. Max, maxed, maxed out settings. Um, so that leads into my first pro is I thought the game looked amazing. Yes, yeah, I thought the absolutely the, the uh, once again going back to what you're saying, environments looked cool, set pieces looked cool, um, you know, characters looked nice. Everything was very detailed, and even now the game still looks good. Um, but to see it, you know, it was running. I had it running full HD, 60 frames, and the game just looked phenomenal i know not everyone okay. can do that but if you can it is absolutely phenomenal I, I will say one of the things that and i i don't think i think i'm alone in this opinion in, in terms of the, the the greater population is um one of the things that i felt was really cool about fallout 4 is that 
I didn't feel like I was walking for really long distances without running into something cool or interesting. Whereas yes. Fallout 3, there was definitely, like, places where I was just, like, traipsing through emptiness going, okay, well, what is the point of, of this big empty space? You know, where's the next thing? Um, yeah, definitely. And I didn't feel like that was the case in this game. Definitely. And, um... To that effect, I felt like Fallout 3 was nice because when I was traipsing through nothing, it was usually like a wooded area and there was at least trees around. New Vegas, nothing. Yeah, it's just desert. Desert, right. Uh, which kind of sucked. But with this, there was uh, a, it was a pretty dense world map, which was nice, um, which I'll get to a little bit later. Yep. Um, my next pro would definitely be the gunplay. I thought they did an amazing job going from Fallout 3 to Fallout 4. Awesome. I, I know. Making it a better first making person. Making it a better first person experience. Yeah. Making it a better third person experience. Yep. There yep. was a lot of. They actually worked with Bungie a little bit to get the gameplay just. to get the gunplay just right. I didn't know that's Which is nice. Bungie is obviously of Halo fame and most recently Destiny. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've played either of those games, you will know that the gunplay is very, very nice. They're dedicated first-person shooters, so yeah. they're very good games. Um, so they definitely did a very good job with the gunplay, I think. Um, next pro would definitely have to be power armor. I know power armor was cool. I know. I, I believe you said you didn't use it as much in your first playthrough, but right. I used it a lot. The customization of the power armor was fun. Just the power armor getting in and out of it, was, just the animation. I loved watching the animation go over and over again. Yeah. Turns it, and he pops in, yeah. and then it closes up behind him. That was cool. It was cool. I have to admit, the first time uh, you know, they had released some of, the, some of the footage for Fallout 4... And they indicated kind of that the power armor was going to be something that you're going to be able to that you're going to have to crawl in and crawl out of, and it wasn't going to just be like armor or just going to be like a suit like in Fallout Three. <clears throat> I was a little disappointed because I was like, oh, how's this going to work? You're going to have to power it, and you're going to have to like search all over to find the power for it. Um, and you did have to do that. You did have to search all over to find fusion cores and stuff like that. Um, but it makes a lot of sense in the lore, in the in the game. You know, I remember in Fallout 3 thinking, like, okay, if this is, why is this something I need training for if it's just something I can wear, like, clothes? Like, it, it was something that was a bit of a disconnect, and it makes so much more sense in the world doing it this way. Yes, definitely. Definitely makes a lot more sense, and it, it just, it gives, I liked searching for power cores. I don't know about you, but I thought it was kind of fun to be, like, Wow, I'm out of a power core. I'm gonna leave my power armor at home. I need to go out searching. I right. need to explore some of these abandoned places. Maybe someplace I can find a power core. And you'd go down into a building, and boom, there's a generator in the basement. Pop yeah. the power that core. That was cool. That and was got cool. it. Sweet, I can run my power. Armor. Of course, I was always worried that I was gonna be out somewhere and the core was gonna run out and it was just gonna stop and I'm gonna be like, no, and I would lose it because that's what I would end up doing. Is I would yeah. just lose it and I would never find it again. Yep. Yep. But uh, actually, they, they remedy that with, they put a marker on your map anyway. They wherever do. You're, they wherever do. you're currently... Wherever your last power, power armor, armor that you wear it was, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that leads to my other pro, the customization, which we did touch upon. Great customization. Love yeah. all the different stuff you can do with the guns. Better sights. I'm a sniper man myself, so I built this awesome sniper rifle. Gave it a custom name. Mm -hmm. Gave it all its custom attributes. You know, with the stock, the the quick release mags, all that sort yep. of stuff, just awesome. And I used it through my whole playthrough, loved it. Really added a touch of personalization to yeah. the game. Added a touch of, I have this awesome rifle. I called it Wanda, um, mostly because if you're a Fallout Three buff like myself, you'll know there was an assault rifle in Fallout Three that was cut. That was supposed to be a special variant of the assault rifle called Wanda. I know. I didn't know. I don't know why they cut it, but they did. I like the name. I used it. Seemed kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very cool. Well, what was also cool is just, you know, kind of getting into the realm of, you know, uh, you know, I know there's some contention over the fact that, that, that this is, you know, claimed to be an RPG because some people feel that there aren't as many RPG elements in it. Mm -hmm. But... I, I think this is one of the one of the places where that does kind of shine in the fact that like you can pick up different pieces of armor and you can have kind of like your base clothes, but you can put like you know this chunk of piece thing here. You can put this chunk of piece thing here. You can put you know synth 
floor arm, but then you can have like a um, you know a, a, a combat armor chest yeah. and a raider mask. You know, you, you can do that kind of stuff that lets you kind of customize your character. A Teddy bit. Bearhead, which they th Teddy showed Bearhead, in a lot yes. of video in a lot of uh, preview videos. Yes, that, mainly the E3 video that they had of it with the Teddy Bearhead. So <clears throat> that brings me to my final pro, which I touched upon earlier, is the size of the map huge yeah uh they say it is three times bigger than skyrim which if you you didn't play skyrim i did anyone else out there played it skyrim was a huge game right um so this this game to be three times bigger was it it, it was a big game it's right. a big game i mean it just looked the hard drive install 50 yeah, at least 50 gigs yeah. so it, it was a big game it was it was a big map there was a so lot to explore map. um so with the good comes the bad. With that huge map, I felt like the world felt a little empty. Really? There were some points where I just like you would find these certain like landmarks and they wouldn't really be anything. That's true. They would just be kind of like <clears throat> there. Yeah. Like just to decorate the world, which I, I get. And you know, it's a it's scenery. Mm -hmm. You know, you make your own sort of set piece. You make your own adventure, but. Yeah. Still, I felt like they, there was just some kind of random stupid stuff there. Yeah. Um, again, going to map, I guess that's sort of a big thing for me. Um, the dungeons, the abandoned areas, mm -hmm. they all felt a little repetitive. Yeah, there was a little bit of that. <coughs> I know one of the... <coughs> especially if you were doing um, the quests, you know, for the settlements... That got to be a little repetitive. Oh. You know, it was like, you know, this person's been kidnapped, and this person's been kidnapped, and can deal with these raiders. And you always went back to the same place, <clears throat> and it was all the same It was all the same issue. Um, and then, really, along those lines, one of the things that I, I didn't include in my cons, but actually is was one of the things I had an issue with, is that there were really not a ton of vaults. And the vaults that we had, like, they were, like, seemed like all of them were just filled with raiders, and there wasn't really... That fun kind of exploration aspect, I felt. Yeah, like, I loved exploring the vaults in Fallout 3, right. and then in New Vegas, I'm like, yes, vaults, I want more vaults, yeah. want to see what's going like on. the plant if, vault, which was just so out there. Yeah, like, I, I love seeing what the, because if you, once again, Fallout lore, um, all the vaults were actually a testing ground right. for a different series of tests experiments yeah experimentations um, and what was cool is so. seeing kind of like <clears throat> the long-term effects of those experiments being carried out within a contained vault like you know yeah. the cloning vault that had was full of all those garys full of the garys <laughs> and all they said was gary and it was yeah. scary as all hell <laughs> yeah. uh, it was tell me you weren't going in there and you found so like freaky. like gary 12 <laughs> gary 13 yelling gary at you with a <laughs> you know pool cue and you're like <laughs> what am i doing where's my gun um so I didn't, I, I, some of them, there were some, when you got down to it, some of them were very interesting. Yeah, like the, Vault 81 I thought was very cool. That was unique in the fact that uh, you had a fully operable, sustained vault that didn't go to heck. And, uh, you know, you could interact with those people and they weren't. You know, there wasn't anything sinister or weird about them. It was just a vault that happened to work out, and and you know, through the course of the story, you find out why. Um, but it was it was it was interesting. A little more sinister in that, uh, hmm? without going into spoilers, it was a little more sinister. Well, it turns that. out it would have been sinister, but uh, but things ended up working out in yeah. the, uh, the the in the long the run. residents' you yeah. know, favor. And and I thought uh, once again going back to Fallout, it, it, it Fallout lore, like you, just, I just loved exploring and figuring out. Oh, well, what was this? Vault what went for? wrong? Yeah. What was what was this ball for? This ball had you know all the drugs. This ball had yep. all the all the plants. All yep. this you know experimentation. So I was a little disappointed. It, it, this was filled with puppets. Like, like <laughs> any anything. I don't even care. Like anything. I just wanted more vaults. Yeah. I think the vaults are one of the most interesting aspects I agree. of the Fallout universe. I agree. Absolutely. It's 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 what it, it's what really brought me brought me into the game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that goes into again one of my other cons, which are the boring quests, which I won't go too much into. There's some boring quests. Yeah. I mean, no, that's true. you can't you can't. It's a Bethesda game. There's going to be some boring quests. Well, it's with a that huge with RPG. that big world, they have to fill that big world with people who need stuff done. And sometimes, you know, it, as you're trying to fill up 
the world, there's only so many things you can come up with for people to do, and that leads to repetition. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, now, I toted the power armor before. I gotta give it some knocks. Some negs. Some negs. Um, it was... How do I say it? It just wasn't something you used all the time. I felt I like I was always afraid of running out, like you said earlier, I was always afraid of running out of power cores, so I just didn't use it. Yeah, that's like, what I, I did didn't, too. I was gonna, I was waiting and waiting yeah. to use it for something big. Something big, something that you're gonna something really need it for. Really need it and for. you never really Yeah, really and then you beat it. the game and you're like, oh, Cause I, I guess I could've used it all. I guess I could've used it. And actually, once you, um, if you go down a particular path and are able to get the um, ballistics weave, yeah. It almost makes them like like god useless. Like god items. It, well, it, it makes the power armor useless because you're basically with that stuff, with the ballistics weave on your hat and oh, your yeah, clothes, yeah, yeah. with your armor pieces on top of it, you're basically at the same defense level of the base level power armor. Yeah, which so, makes it useless. Which if you're in power armor, you're you're pretty powerful with power right. armor on. Your, your, right. your defense is high. Yeah. So, yeah, it, does, it, it makes it a little bit useless. Yeah. Um, and then my last con. Yeah, this one's a big one. The pipe weapon. There's so many dumb so pipe weapons. So many stupid pipe so weapons. So many dumb ones. So many stupid pipe I mean, pipe it, pipe it, pipe every raider just has a, a garbage pipe weapon. Just and they're and they're all awful. They're awful. all awful. I even they're modified terrible. one completely. Like the best steps try to max it out, out, yeah. out of it, and it was still awful. And I still have three thousand rounds of it. Yeah. And it took me forever to. They're even awful. Do anything they're with useless it. and they're ugly. Like you can't even mod it and make it look cool. Like it'd be one to. thing if they were pipe weapons, and you start out with one that's kind of shoddy, and it's got like a nail for a trigger and a uh, you know a two by four for a stop. But then you can upgrade it, and like even like even though it's like really handcrafted, you can make it look real cool. You just never get to that point. Yeah, it's just never, always never shoddy done. looking, and it wasn't that good. And there was so yep. many of them everywhere. It got to the point where I was just like, I'm not picking this up because it's not worth selling, and it's not worth me carrying and losing some of my my carry you know yeah, capacity. capacity weight when you know I I'm. Question duct tape. I'm not going to be carrying a bunch of pipe weapons. They're useless. You can't even like right. bring. You can't even break them down into anything useful. Right. It's just not. I just hate the pipe weapons. I hate the. They were awful. Um, now, before we get into our final thoughts on this game, why don't you tell me a little bit about what we have going on here? My favorite thing in the world right now. This is really cool. I'm, I'm really really this jealous is of this piece. For people who, if you were, I wasn't in attendance at E3. I watched it live. They announced the fallout pit boy edition and yeah. i immediately as soon as they announced it as soon as it was on amazon pre-ordered my copy because i knew it was going to sell out fast and, and it did that it night like i think that within the I hour it was done yeah that night i came home and i looked at it just like because i wasn't sure even if i was going to buy you know i didn't have a system at the time or a computer that was going to be able to handle it so i wasn't even sure what i would buy it for and i even went to look just for kind of s's and g's and nothing nothing Nothing. It was it was already sold out. It was ridiculous. So I got lucky. You did. This is the Fallout Four Pit Boy Edition, and I absolutely am in love with it. It's it's pretty ba. Um, costs about a hundred and thirty dollars, if I remember correctly. Which is a which is a chunk it's of change. A hefty, it's a hefty price tag. It's a hefty price tag, but what, but you, what you get, get with it. is amazing. You get the game, obviously. Right. The season pass, yeah. Which, if anyone is watching now, they'll know that the season pass did go up. It did go up, yeah. When they announced more DLC, which I thought I was gonna have to like rebuy the season pass, or my season pass wasn't gonna work. Oh no, my season pass no, works. No, you're good. And I'm good for the all six DLCs that they're coming out with. Yep. So, which is awesome. I love it. Um, it all comes. It comes with the Pip Boy, which I'll get into, and it all comes in this fancy little vault tech esque box that Which is, is just cool it's so like period to fall out well like, not just period but just just apropos to the world it yeah it's amazing it has all the it's got all sorts of like you know for vault 101 deployment and you know uh it pip m4 it's got all the different statistics you know it's got the model number it's got you know personal information processor i just think it is so 
so cool. I love the box. I it think is, the box is, is there was a lot the of coolest. a lot of detail uh, put into the packaging to make it feel like it really came from this world. And it, it has the humor too. I mean, yeah, fits most human arms. Um, console your overseer. Refer to the enclosed operation instructions. Um, does not have. Does not emit alpha, beta, or gamma rays, doesn't have radioactive choices. Um, so I just, I thought that was so cool. And it comes with so much, like, detail. This is where the Pip Boy was. It comes with an awesome um, condensed edition of different things. It's got my registration code on the back. Now, it's not that it's going to help any of you guys, because I already registered it. Um, it comes with the operational manager, manager, manage you know what i'm saying manual manual that's what i'm trying to that's say the word. that's the word i'm it's looking okay. for and it has it just has that fallout <laughs> flare it's got the fall tech insignia everywhere it's got all sorts of like it looks like it comes from the fallout universe it's got pictures of the mock one the mark one pit boy oh jeez i just i absolutely fell <laughs> in love with this piece and i think it's absolutely amazing um it has obviously some modern day references because this bad boy fits a phone. Which is awesome. This is cool. You can actually put a phone in it, it syncs to an app, and you can sync it to your game, which I've done a few times. It's neat. It's an it's interesting very, thing. It's a very cool thing. I did it with my phone, even though I don't have the unit, <laughs> but I did do it with the app and, and connected it to my game, and it's, it's a really fun thing to play around with. Yeah, and I would be lying if I said that I didn't once. <laughs> Was wearing the Pip Boy while playing the while game. playing the game with it connected to my game because it's that cool. Um, you have to if you don't if you if purchase you, this if you, and don't do it at least once you're wasting your life. You, you're wasting you wasted your money. You wasted one hundred and thirty dollars is what you did. But the biggest thing is the biggest thing that obviously comes with this is the Pip Boy itself. It's a very nicely made Pip Boy. I mean, obviously. It's not the best Pip Boy you'll find on the internet. There's been right. some. There's been some improved versions that have come out that I think obviously do it a little, do the Pip Boy a little more justice. But for what you pay for, I mean, I pretty much pay. <coughs> you pay sixty dollars <coughs> for the game. You pay another thirty, forty bucks for the season pass. And you get this for like forty bucks. I mean, yeah. well, you're not gonna be able to get a replica Pit Boy like this no, for you forty can't. bucks. No, uh, you can't. Absolutely. So I think it was. I just think it was really, really, really cool. It fits the. It fits my arm okay. It's a little bit big. Obviously, they did that on purpose. We're skinny kids. Yeah, we're skinny people. And it's, <laughs> it's what it is. You come to terms with that sort of thing. Um, so it comes with this nice display stand, and I'll be perfectly honest with you. I display it in my room. It's my only collector's edition. That I have, I have a, a, a few collector's editions that I, I have displayed, but this is the only one that I have the stuff actually out, out and, on. and displayed. Yep. Um, which is is saying something that you know this is just a fun piece to have. It just looks nice, looks nice in the room, <clears throat> um, and obviously it also comes with the steel a case. steel a steel box for the game itself, which is, I mean, it's cool. It's neat. Gets the job done. It's um, very cool. So, with that all said, that all out of the way, final grades. Yeah, final grades, definitely. What do you think? What do you have to fall out for? I mean, it's it's a solid A minus. I mean, I, I may be a little biased just because I love the world. I love, you know, I definitely went into the game, you know, with, with a little bit of anticipation and thinking, you know, that I, I was looking forward to it. So, that may color my opinion a little bit. But I think A A minus is, is is really fair. I mean, there's a couple of little little issues that that you you could take umbrage with, um, but overall, I think it's a solid game. So I, I would definitely give it an A minus. Definitely, I'm going to agree with you there. I'm giving it an A minus as well. I've been playing through. I played through it vanilla the first time. I've been doing some playthroughs, and now that mod support is a go, I've been modding like crazy. EMBs, weapon mods, all that sort of stuff. Mods, Love it. mod stuff is cool. Mods, we won't get into that. <clears throat> just expands the life of the game to yeah. like I'm still playing it. I haven't even done everything in the game. It took me like a hundred hours just to get to like the first DLC. Yeah. And I'm still working on the Far Harbor DLC, and they haven't even released the last DLC pieces right. for it. So right. it's it's amazing 
how much content is in the game and how much different stuff you can do. So definitely yeah, A minus. Mo- yeah, yeah. I mean, the mod support definitely um, <clears throat> kicks it up a notch. You know, uh, the official mod support, the fact that I'm able to do it on the Xbox. I mean, we we didn't really cover that or want to cover that in this, um, but that is something that's that's very cool. And, Maybe in another episode, we'll sure, take we a could look at, look at some different DLCs some, and the DLC or, I'm and sorry, different mods the DLCs and some different mods for available. The game because there are, as of right now, <laughs> since the game is almost a year old, there are a ton, ton of mods. Of mods. Ton, ton of mods. Of, we're talking even on even on the Xbox already. Nexus counts it at at about twelve thousand mods wow. right now. That's crazy. Raging all the way from new content to just little fixes. Little fixes. So yeah. um, I, I think. If you don't have this game and you like any sort of RPG, play it. Oh, I would definitely it recommend it. Yeah, it's been definitely it, be highly recommended. It's definitely. actually nowadays you can pick it up for a little bit less, forty bucks, which is a great price. Pick it up on the Xbox, you get Fallout Three for you free. You do get Fallout Three free with it. Um, pick it up great. on the PC, you get you know this full mod support. Yep. Fortunately, the Xbox, uh, PlayStation players are a little bit behind. They don't have mod support yet. As of as of working. our recording, they're they're still working on that. They're still working on it, and you don't get a free copy of Fallout Three. But still, right. pick it up. The game is amazing. It's really worth your time. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that's everything that we have today. Um, so we hope you enjoyed our feedback, and hopefully, it uh, helps you inform your purchasing decisions. So thank you very much for being with us, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Absolutely.